Welcome back to the Without the Bank Podcast. Thank you very much for being here. We talk about all things infinite banking, business, creating wealth, cash flow, all good stuff. Today, we are going to be talking about business entity structure. And I don't know, this probably isn't going to be very long. But let me tell you, I am not an accountant and I am not an attorney. But I am a little bit experienced in this arena. And when I talk to you guys and you call and we have our one-on-one meetings, I find that so many of you are running businesses, but you do not have a business entity structure. You don't know what it is. Nobody tells you what it is. And so I just wanted to go over that a little bit today. And then you can take this information and you can go back to your accountant. You can go back to an attorney, whoever it is that you want to go back to. So make sure that you are consulting people and not just taking my word for it. But I'm, you know, I'm just here to give ideas because that's what I'm really good at. Okay. So when you have a business, you start your business and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I'm going to go get my business name and I'm going to have business cards made up, right? Or I'm not even going to have business cards made up. I'm just going to put a Facebook page out there and do a website and whatever. We're not doing it all right. And so when you start your business, now this is a learn from me moment because a lot of things I maybe didn't get done correctly because I didn't have the right people to do them correctly. Okay. So when I started my business, you or when you start a business, you start small and you're like, yeah, maybe I'll make some money. Right? So you are a sole proprietor. All the income from the business flows up to you and your tax return as a sole proprietor. Yes, you will have some business write-offs because you can deduct travel expenses, any magazine expenses, any cell phone usage, anything that goes along with the business, you should be able to deduct or at least a percentage of it. Now, what happens when you start to make money? And this is what this is when I see this disconnect. When we start to make money, then we are still a sole proprietor. That is the highest tax bracket that you can be in. So we want to move some of that money out of there. And the reason why is because you have self-employment tax. So Social Security, Medicare is like 15, I heard today on a podcast, 15.3%. So if we take that business and we create an S corp or a corporation, we can reduce our taxes possibly. If we are an S corp, we can start paying ourselves payroll and then we can reduce some of that 15.3% tax. If not all of it, because some of the money as an S corp, some of the money comes to you as payroll. So you pay federal, state, social security, Medicare, and then you can take money as a distribution or a draw on the company. That is federal and state only, no social security and Medicare. Now, if you are a corporation, you can't just move money in and out as a distribution. You have to write yourself a check which then comes to you personally and the corporation gets taxed. I am not a corporation expert because I don't have a corporation. I have an S corp. Okay. So here is also where a disconnect comes. People will say to me, well, Mary Jo, I have an LLC. An LLC is not a tax designation. An LLC is a legal protection. So if someone were to sue you, you have the protection of the LLC, providing you've done all the paperwork for the LLC. You've had all the meeting minutes, you've done all that stuff. If that has all been done, then you're great. You have the protection of the LLC. If you don't do all that stuff, you don't even have the protection of the LLC. They can come back to you personally. But if you are an LLC with an S Corp designation, then you have the protection and you have the tax advantages. 
Now I have worked with several different accountants over the years and they have all said, until you start making about 30 to $40,000 a year net after expenses, then it doesn't really pay to have that corporation, that S corp or the corporation set up. Now I have been hearing on podcasts, accountants say you can go back and forth from an S corp to a C corp, because if you do that, then you have a better tax advantage. I did not know that till just recently, because frankly, my accountant does a really good job of filing my paperwork and he's going to be there to protect me, but he's not a good advisor because he's not advising me to do anything different than just put my money into an IRA. Well, we all know what Mary Jo thinks of IRAs and that is the most absurd advice ever that someone would give me. Like, why would you give me that advice? <laughs> Check who, out, who you're talking to. Um, so I have yet to really find an accountant that understands everything that we do. Cause we have farm ground, we have several businesses, we have rental properties. Like all of those things, and they it seems like they understand one maybe, but not the other. Like I can find somebody to understand farming, but not rental properties. Rental properties, yes, farming, no. So I'm having to do all this research myself. You are going to have to put the time and energy in. There is a pod podcast called the Business, the Anderson Business Advisors Podcast. They are accountants. They are, they have a legal team. They really have a good podcast that you can take that information back to your own people. I have called them. I have talked to them. They did not have any better advice for me than my current accountant. So I am not leaving, um, my current accountant until I can find somebody that actually has better advice. I'm just going to stay where I'm at. If you guys know of a good accountant, a planner, please let me know, pass it along because I do have a couple of people that I can talk to that I've not talked to yet. Um, but if you are at the point of being small, here's another thing that happens. And this happened to me personally. It happened to a close friend of mine and it just drives me insane. So y'all know, y'all, everybody thinks I just don't like bankers. Well, you know what? I don't mind the banker. I use a banker. I have a banker. It's all good. You know who really irritates me are accountants. And this is why. So when my business, you know, you're riding along your level, 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 and pretty soon everybody in the world just gives up on you. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're not going to, you're never going to make any money. And so I said, I need to have that S corp designation. And my accountant at the time was like, oh yeah, I'll get that filed. Well, he never got it filed. I am almost certain I, I signed the darn thing. Um, like 99.9% .9 certain I signed the paperwork. He must have not sent it in and he must have not sent it in. I don't know why, but I'm guessing that he thought, well, you're never going to make any money, Mary Jo. Then this S corp is going to actually cost you money. Cause here's the thing. When you go to the S corp designation, you have to start doing payroll and you have payroll taxes and you have unemployment taxes and you have all these other things. And so he obviously didn't send it in. Well, what happened to my income? I was level and then I just jot it up because that is the year that I released my farming without the bank book. And I had some content for people to grab onto to understand what I was teaching. He didn't file my S corp designation. The amount of money that I was on the hook for taxes was ridiculous ridiculous. And I did not know what I know now about taxes. Yes, I had the money to pay my taxes, but good Lord. So last year, year and a half ago, I'm sitting with a friend that is a realtor and re real estate is not an easy business. Being a realtor is not easy. You can be super, super successful, but you are going to have to pound pavement and you are going to have to work just like any other business. You don't get to just sell houses because people are buying houses. It just doesn't work that way. And so lo and behold, her accountant was like, oh, you don't need to be an S corp designation. You're not going to make that much money next year. And she blew it out of the water. 
And guess what? They weren't an S-Corp designation and they got hammered on taxes. She was so mad. And I remember sitting with her and I said, well, do you know the difference between an S-Corp designation and just a sole proprietor is what you're doing now? And she's like, no, I don't care about that stuff. I said, you need to care about this stuff. So if you are a business owner and I have already got your attention 10 minutes and you're still listening to me, thank you very much. If you don't care about this stuff, it is not that hard. It is literally two ways of getting paid as an S-Corp, one through payroll, Two, through distribution. Distribution saves you about 15% in taxes. It's that simple. And I drew it out for her and she said, oh, I really should be an S-Corp. Yes, and you really should not be taking that much pay right away. Here's another thing that I see. is account I have a Two um, young clients, they are 35 years old, they bought this new business, and they are sticking every red cent back into the business to grow the business. And what did the accountant say? You should be taking payrolls of, I think it was seventy or $90,000 a year. That's what your payroll should be. What? What? Why is their payroll so high? Why would they not take a payroll of 40 or 50? because the rest of it's going back into the business. Why are they paying taxes on 70 when they are growing the business and they're not taking money out of the business? They don't need that to live. They're single. They have no children. Why are they taking so much money out of the business? And they did not understand this. They did not understand how this worked. So. I at least arm them with enough information to go back to the accountant and say, why am I taking so much money out of the business when we're actually just putting it right back into the business from the personal side? We take it on one side and put it back into the business on the personal side. Let's just not take it and pay tax on it. Again, I am not an accountant and I am not an attorney. And here is another thing. Do not, for the love of Pete, do not go to your accountant to file your LLC paperwork or your partnership paperwork or your corporation or your, um, yeah, your corporation paperwork. Do not go to your accountant. He is not an attorney. He or she is not an attorney. You go to your attorney to file that paperwork and then your accountant does the taxes. People do not understand everything about the legal protection. So go to the attorney. Now, I have started enough of them that I just go online and do it myself because it is very, very simple to do it yourself, but make sure you are keeping your minutes and keeping all the other stuff. And I suck at that myself because it is boring and it is paperwork and it's awful. I hate it. It only takes a few minutes, but I hate it but make sure that you are doing these things correctly so that you are protected and you are paying minimal taxes. I hate to say it, but you are going to have to educate yourself on all fronts because I've yet to find anybody that actually does it and does it well. Like I am happy to pay somebody to help save me taxes. Happy to. Where are they? I don't know. But if you are starting out and you are getting to the point where you are making money or you know next year is going to be the big year, you can start out as an LLC and then you can add the S Corp designation later. But it has to be done January, February, March. You cannot add that. You can't be like, oh my God, I'm having a fantastic year. It's July. I'm going to add the S Corp designation. No, 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 no. You need to do it within the first three months of the year. Okay? So if you're an LLC, you need to add that along the way. I'm kind of all over here. Sorry about that. But if you, if you think you're going to have a good year, you'll add it. Who cares if you don't quite come out to where you were? The next year should be right where it's supposed to be. If you are not putting in any more effort, if you are not going to be driven to make it a better year, then just stay where you're at. 
because you're probably not going to do better. But if you are somebody that is constantly driving, constantly marketing, constantly contacting people, and you are working your business, then it will be successful. And you need to know this stuff. It is not hard. People make it hard, but it's not hard. Do not pay more in taxes than you need to. And yes, you're going to have business write-offs. But not every business write-off is a smart business write-off. That's a whole other podcast, my friends. All right. I can't think of anything else on that front that would um, be kind of just the entry level, enough for you to get to your accountant or your attorney. Um, but it's not... It's not something that you can overlook. Don't get so busy building your business that you forget the tax portion of it. Let me know if you have questions, comments, concerns. Let me know if there is a topic that you want to hear. Email me, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. If you have not gotten my book, Life Without the Bank, if you have not gotten Nelson's book, Become Your Own Banker, please do that. Go to withoutthebank.com grab your book, and then you get an hour and a half of my time. And it's super fun because I like talking to you guys. So schedule your time. We'll visit. See if there's anything that we can do. If there is, fantastic. If there's not, great. Then you're ready for down the road when you do have the money to get started. So thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you. And let me know if there's anything that I can do. You have a fantastic day.